We have Heavenly Fire, and my book just fell in the garbage. Hello everyone, welcome back to Becca's Book Nook. Today I'm going to be doing the Shadowhunter book tag. This tag was created by Samantha's book back in 2014, I believe, so I am a little bit behind, but because I'm doing it now in 2021, instead of just comparing the Infernal Devices to the Mortal Instruments, I'm going to be able to compare those two books to the Dark Artifices as well as The Last Hours. So it's going to be a little bit more intricate and complicated, and I'm very excited to see which series is going to be winning. This tag consists of 10 questions about these four series and I'm going to have to decide which series I prefer for that specific question and in the end we will see which series is ultimately my favorite I suppose based on this tag even though my favorite series would be a little bit more complicated than just 10 questions but yeah let's get right into it I'm so excited to do this for you guys today. The first question of this tag is who is your favorite main character? So our options are of course Clary Tessa, Emma, and Cordelia. So the Immortal Instruments is my least favorite one of Cassie's series, so Clary is definitely not my favorite female protagonist as she can be a little bit whiny in my opinion and I feel like her and Jace just sort of piss me off together as a couple, so I don't know, she's definitely not my favorite. Cordelia is a badass, but she is still fairly new to me. I feel like I've spent a lot more time with the other two, so I don't really want to say Cordelia yet. I'm going to just set her to the side and focus mainly on Emma Costas and Tessa Gray. Oh, I love Queen Tessa. She is such a badass. She can change into whoever she wants. She is loved by two of the most amazing men in the world, and I just love her as a character. But Emma is literally the definition of a badass. She is one of the most amazing shadow hunters of her generation. She's brave, she's powerful. And I think I'm going to have to go with Emma as my favorite main character. So that is one point for the Dark Artifices series. The next question of this tag is who is your favorite Herondale? We are of course picking between Jace, Will, Mr. Kit, and James. While I love Kit, he is definitely at the bottom of the barrel here just because I don't know. I sort of fell in love with him as not a Herondale. I sort of just sort of saw him as just being sort of Kit Rook, the person that he wanted to be before he wanted to be a Herondale. So I don't really imagine him when I think of my Herondales. Jace was my first love. He was one of the first literary characters I ever fell in love with. So he's definitely in the running. Mr. James is growing on me. I love him. He's a sweetheart. But there really is no question for who's my favorite Herondale. The absolute love of my life, William Owen Herondale, will always be my favorite male literary character of all time. The third question of this tag is what is the best love triangle? So of course we have Will Tessa Jam, then we have Simon, Clary, and Jace, which I'm just honestly going to tell you guys right now is not even in the running for me. Then I'm going to say the love triangle for this series, the main one at least, is Christina, Kieran, and Mark. I don't really count Mark, Julian, and Emma as a love triangle because it's fake, so that doesn't really feel like it's anything to me. And then Cordelia, James, and Grace. And maybe Matthew. Maybe it's more of a love square. So obviously the love triangle I'm going to pick is Hair and Grey Stairs. That is the best love triangle I've ever read about in my life. It doesn't compare to anything else because I genuinely didn't know whose side I was on until like the series ended. So that will always be my favorite love triangle of all time. If you're keeping track, this is one point for the Dark Artifices and now two points for the Infernal Devices. The next question we have in this tag is who is the better villain? So for this question, we have Valentine slash Sebastian, the whole sort of Morgenstern villains um, and then we have the Magister and then we have Malcolm and Annabelle that little horrendous duo 
and then in Chain of Gold, we have Belial. So right away, I'm going to cancel out Belial just because I haven't finished the series yet and I feel as though I've been paying a lot more attention to the actual plot line and storyline of these books than I have been paying attention to the villain and he just doesn't really seem like as big of a deal to me as the other villains do. I think I'm also going to eliminate the magister just because he was never really super scary to me so let's focus it down to the morgenstern twins and the horrendous duo valentine and sebastian are absolutely terrifying uh sebastian genuinely makes me sick to my stomach whenever i think about him and the things that he wanted from clary and all that gross stuff and valentine was pretty scary as well they're both great villains in my opinion and they do freak me out Malcolm and Annabelle are terrifying, but I also feel like you could potentially see Malcolm's motives and that makes him slightly less scary to me, whereas Annabelle is just hurt and upset and I feel like that also sort of takes away from her danger element. So I think I'm going to have to go with the Morgensterns on this one. So there is a point for the immortal instruments. Question five is which book has the better army? So of course we are talking about the dark army the clockwork army the cohort and i'm just going to stick to those three because i don't really feel like there's an army in the last hours at this point in time well the dark army was awful and the cohort made me want to rip my hair out i think i am going to have to go with the clockwork army on this one because they are genuinely terrifying there was no way to beat them literally the only way for them to be destroyed was tessa genuinely turning into an angel so they were absolutely terrifying and they were the one army that i would never ever want to go up against. Question six is which series has the better first book? So as we've been talking about the entire time, we're talking about City of Bones versus City of... Ugh. Question six is which series had the best first book? So we are of course talking about City of Bones versus Clockwork Angel versus Lady Midnight versus Chain of Gold. I am going to right away eliminate I am going to right away eliminate City of Bones just because it is not my favorite first book at all. It took me a long time to get into it, so that's just automatically going to be put on the very bottom of the list. And then this is going to be difficult for me to choose between these three. I think I am also going to be putting Clockwork Angel away just because I definitely do prefer the other two books over this one, even though it is still amazing. And then we are going to mainly be focusing on Lady Midnight and Chain of Gold. After a little bit of deliberation, I think I am ultimately going to go with Lady Midnight as the best first book out of all of these series because it really just right away brought me into the world of the LA Institute, threw me into these characters' worlds, and I just wanted to be there in this book, and it really just brought me joy, and every time I read it, I'm brought back to that moment in my life. So it definitely gets another point, so TDA is now at two points. Question seven is which book has the best female sidekick? And I'm gonna have to side with Christine from Pull and Banana's books here and say that these characters cannot exactly be called sidekicks in my opinion, but I suppose if they have to be given a label, then it's fine. But we are choosing between Cecily Herondale, Isabel Lightwood, Christina Rosales, and Lucy Herondale. Honestly, I don't really have to give this one too much thought because as much as I love all of these female characters, I am going to have to go with Isabel Lightwood. I fell in love with her character when I was younger. I wanted to be just like her. She is a badass. She's an amazing, strong, independent, powerful female character, and she means a lot to me ever since I read the books for the first time. So um, the Mortal Instruments definitely gets my point for this one. Question eight is which series has the better setting? And you guys know that we're choosing between the New York Institute, the London Institute, and the LA Institute. Once again, this question doesn't really need that much thought for me as I am obviously going to be going with the London Institute. We are there for two of these series and I feel like because we've spent so much time there, I just feel so close to that world and I've wanted to go to England for my entire life and these book series just made me want to travel there even more. I want to travel where they travel, walk where they walk, and just see all of the wonderful things in London that they are always raving about in these books. So for the last 
last two questions, we are just mainly going to be focusing on the infernal devices, the mortal instruments, and the dark artifices because uh, the last hour still does not have a final book. So question nine is which of these series has the best book? So we are, of course, comparing between Clockwork Princess, City of Heavenly Fire, and Queen of Air and Darkness, the monster. I can't even carry it with one hand. <laughs> These books are genuinely all so wonderful. They all just wrap up the series so, so well. Uh, this is gonna be really hard for me to decide. I'm gonna have to weigh some pros and cons here and figure out which of these beauties wins. So as much as I love Clockwork Princess and City of Heavenly Fire, they are both just so wonderful and such beautiful stories, I think I am going to have to go with the monster Queen of Air and Darkness because it's just huge. So many amazing things happen. The story just follows every character I want. Everyone has an amazing ending and it just sets up the Wicked Powers so well and I genuinely can't even imagine all the things that happen in this book because it is so big and it was just so wonderful and i think it has to win for the best um ending book and so yeah the dark artifices wins that one as well the final question of this tag question number 10 is which of the final books has the better epilogue clockwork princess city of heavenly fire or a queen of air and darkness and i am 120,000 percent going to have to say clockwork princess while the other two books have wonderful epilogues that wrap the story up clockwork princess broke my heart into a million pieces it is so hauntingly beautiful i will never get over the tears and the emotion that i felt when reading this epilogue so i just have to choose it there's really no other option that would have been a better choice so if you have been keeping track, you will notice that, of course, the Infernal Devices won with five correct answers. This is my favorite one of Cassie's series by far. Um, I am slowly starting to like The Last Hours a lot. I'm sure it will quickly become my second favorite one of her series, and I cannot wait to read the last book. But yeah, for now, the Infernal Devices will always be my favorite of her series. Please feel free to do this tag if you enjoyed watching mine. I would love to watch and see your responses to these questions and to see how they differ from mine. I love to see other people's opinions on things, so please feel free to do that if you enjoyed it. Please also give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. I post every Wednesday and I can't wait to have more people join in on my family. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more bookish related content. I post every Wednesday and I would love to have more members of my booktube family joining me on this journey. I will also link all of my socials down below if you want to follow me there, but if not, I will see you guys in my next video and thank you all so much for watching. Bye!